So if we can see a recovery process doing it this method just takes too long. We have too many restrictions. For one, we have our manifold gauge set. So we're pulling through a quarter inch hose and a quarter inch hose through our quarter inch manifold gauge set. So this manifold gauge set alone is a restriction. Now we're pulling from both of these hoses through one quarter inch hose all the way through our machine. And then here we have our low loss fitting. The low loss fitting itself is also a restriction. As well as our low loss fitting here is a restriction and our low loss fitting there is a restriction. So first let's start off by removing what restrictions we can. So let's take this low loss fitting off. And let's take our low loss fittings off our unit. And let's do away with this manifold gauge set. So we know that these automatic low loss fittings are a restriction because there's a valve built inside of here. So as these automatically open and close, they're always having a restriction. So what we're gonna do is replace the hose with this manual ball valve style fitting. So here it's in the off position and we just simply turn this and now it's in the full flow position. It's open and there's no restrictions, a ball valve, and allows free flow all the way through this fitting. So it's much, much faster. The problem is we still have a restriction here at our Schrader cores or automatic little valves right here. And these are very similar to the ones you have in your car tires, but that keeps the refrigerant inside when we don't have any hoses hooked up. If we didn't have that valve, the refrigerant would just shoot straight out of there and we'd have an issue. But this is also going to be a restriction for us as well. So here's what we look like. Here we have this little quarter inch opening right here. And then this is our Schrader core inside. And when we depress the Schrader core, it pushes on the very end. And then the, the valve on the inside opens. So it's a very, very small hole. Even if we get this depressed all the way properly, all the refrigerant has to flow through that little bitty Schrader valve uh, inside the valve through all these restrictions and then it can continue to flow on the other side. So it's very, very restrictive. However, we have an option. If we use our proper tool, we can actually unscrew the Schrader core and now we have full and free flow through this opening and it really speeds up the process. So what we're gonna do is take the Schrader cores out of the unit we're working on. The problem is if I use this tool and I take this out, all the refrigerant is gonna come spraying out. So we have another tool we're gonna to use. This tool is gonna to work great. We're just gonna simply thread this on just like we normally would. With this top valve right here in the open position, it allows this pin to move back and forth, back and forth inside of here. What we're gonna do is push it all the way in and what we're gonna do is grab that Schrader core. So now it's grabbed a hold of it and I'm gonna hold it in with one thumb and unscrew with the other two fingers. Now it keeps clicking, so I know it's completely unscrewed. Now when I let go, the pressure from inside the unit pushes this back, and I close this valve off right here. Now this separates the refrigerant inside of the unit from where our Schrader core is. Now if we're lucky we got the first try, we're simply going to unscrew this fitting right here. And right there, we have caught or collected our Schrader core. So now we've removed another restriction. Let's do the same exact thing on the suction side. We're connected, my valve here is open. I'm gonna push this up inside. I'm gonna grab that Schrader core and then we're gonna start unscrewing it. We release it, we close this valve off. It isolates the refrigerant from the system at this point and allows it to open at this bottom piece without losing any refrigerant. And if we're lucky, the first try, we'll have our Schrader core. And there it is, our very first try there is our Schrader core right there. So our refrigerant is now unrestricted from this point. If I was to open this valve right now, refrigerant would shoot out. If I was to open this valve, liquid refrigerant would shoot out. So we don't want to open those valves until we're ready. What we're going to do next is hook our hoses up to this system. So what I want to use is the absolute shortest hoses as possible. Now I prefer to use larger hoses, but I don't have enough larger hoses left. They got left behind at my last school. We're going to connect our hose straight to the very end where we remove those Schrader cores. What we're going to do is hook this hose up to the machine. But if I do that, I won't have room to put my other hose. So we're going to have to add another component. And I got a few options. I have a T like this. And I can put this T on here and hook both hoses to the T. But also what I prefer to do is simply use another Schrader core tool. And what I've done is I've removed the little Schrader core from the side and I'm not using it as a Schrader core tool. I'm just gonna be using this as a nice little convenience T. What this allows me to do is be able to hook my liquid valve straight into the very bottom. Now I'm connected 
I have my little manual valve here, which I'm not really going to need. I'm going to go ahead and leave this open. And now I'm going to hook my other hose up to the suction side. And then I have the other end that we're going to hook right to the side port. And again, I've removed this Schrader port already. So I'm going to hook this hose up. We now have no restrictions. There's no Schrader ports here. There's no automatic low loss fittings we have to worry about. We have nice short hoses. What I'd prefer was these hoses to be 3 8 It'd be much larger hoses. I don't have those, so we're gonna have to deal with what we have. So here we're going from both my high side and my low side, straight to this T. From the T, we're going into our filter dryer, and then in where it says into our recovery machine. So now we're speeding up the process a whole lot faster. And I can still control the flow of refrigerant through these valves, and I can also control the flow of refrigerant if I needed through the valves here, my manual ball valve style low loss fittings. But we still have another restriction to deal with. So now that we've sped the refrigerant flow up into our machine, we need to also speed it up on the other side. One of the big problems people make is they continue to use this small quarter inch hose right here. What's happening is we're pulling the refrigerant very fast out of the system. It starts pulsating as it's going into the tank. And that pulsation of that refrigerant flowing will actually damage this output or the high pressure valve. And you'll see the spring even come loose. If you see one of those in the field, you know that the hose I've been using is going to be too small. So what we're going to do is replace this hose with a much larger hose. And in this case, I'm gonna use this large 3 8 hose. You can see how it's much larger in diameter. And what I've done is also put a manual low loss valve fitting right here, and that's gonna go on my machine. The other side is gonna go right here on my tank that says vapor only. And I'm gonna leave it loose here, and I'm gonna connect this side to my recovery machine. So now we've sped the process up a lot more, but we still have another issue. The fact that I'm putting liquid refrigerant into my vapor port, it allows that refrigerant to expand inside the tank and then has to compress back into a liquid again. That puts a whole lot more pressure and slows down a recovery process. So we need to put this refrigerant into the tank in a liquid form. But if you remember back to our cut open section of a recovery tank, if I connected it to the port that said liquid, it would be pushing it through the straw to the bottom. Now that sounds great because we're keeping it in liquid form all the way into the tank and pushing the liquid into the bottom. But the problem is this little bitty hose right here, this dip tube or this straw is gonna be restrictive. So what we're gonna do is leave it on the vapor side, but if we turn our tank completely upside down, now we're able to push that liquid refrigerant straight into the very bottom, and now we don't have the restriction of this vapor port. So by leaving it on the vapor port, turning the tank upside down, we're pushing the liquid refrigerant directly into the bottom. It's not having to change state. It keeps our tank a lot cooler, and it also speeds up the recovery without having to have the restriction of that dip tube. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this tank upside down shortly, but first we still have to purge our equipment. So before we turn this tank upside down, let's get to purging. Now, before we purge through everything all at once, but now that we have these two individual hoses, we have to be careful to purge them each hose individually. So now let's do that process. So now I need to purge this hose. So the valve is closed here and I have my hose loose at this point and the valve is closed here. As I open this, liquid refrigerant is gonna come this direction and leak or purge out of this connection. Because it's liquid refrigerant, it's much, much more dangerous. So I wanna make sure I use only two fingers so that when the refrigerant comes out, it's gonna go this direction and this direction. Either case, it's away from my fingers. If you use gloves, you have to use a butylene type glove or some kind of a glove that's not going to absorb any kind of liquid because you do not wanna absorb liquid refrigerant to your glove. It's gonna be much more dangerous. So I'm gonna use two hands. One is gonna be here. The other one's gonna control my valve. Now it's tight here and I'm completely open air. So I've purged that individual hose. So I've opened both of these valves. The in valve is open and the out valve is open. And we see that the valve is closed right here. What's cool about that is when I open this valve for the vapor side, vapor refrigerant is gonna flow into this hose through this valve that's open and it's gonna enter my low loss fitting past the point where it's closed. You see it's closed off here, keeping this hose separate, but it's gonna allow it to flow past this point in through our filter dryer, into our recovery machine input, out of our recovery machine output through this larger hose, and it's going to leak or purge out of this hose that I have purposely left loose. So there's many ways of doing it. This is just one of those examples. So let's go through that process now. I'm gonna open this valve, and then I'm gonna tighten this, and it's gonna purge through the machine, through the hose, and out.
Now I've completely purged all the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and close these valves off. Just like I would with my manifold gauge set, I can close off each of these. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I leave this open. We're open here, open here, open here, open, open. Everything is connected except we are closed at my tank. We are closed at my unit. So now we're just about ready to start, except we need to make sure that we turn this tank the other direction so it's coming into the bottom. So our tank is upside down. So even though it says vapor, we're gonna be pushing it in at the bottom so it's gonna be liquid. So we're gonna be filling this tank up with liquid refrigerant. So we're just about ready to start, but what we're gonna do is take our scale and we're gonna zero or tear our scale. So now we're gonna be measuring how much refrigerant we're pushing into this recovery tank. Now we have it closed at our tank here and we're closed here and here. So we're ready to start our machine up. When I start this machine, it's gonna be kind of loud, but we're gonna to flow through the process. I'm gonna turn the machine on here and I'm quickly going to open this valve to allow it to start pushing into the tank. And then what I'm gonna do is open the liquid valve first. I wanna pull the liquid refrigerant out of this machine first, and then I'm gonna open up the suction valve and start pulling vapor out of both sides. So let's get ready, set, and let's get started. Now we're going to open this valve. Now we're pulling liquid and the vapor at the same time. Two quarter inch hoses should speed up our process. Now, if we notice, that was much, much faster. We're over here at about less than 10 minutes time and we recovered all that refrigerant. So it definitely speeds up the process. Also, these methods that we use are covered in the instruction manual for this recovery machine. We also use a good thick extension cord to make sure we don't have any voltage drop to this machine, but you can see we recovered that refrigerant much faster. What still took a little bit of time was when we got down to where it's only vapor. It took a little bit longer. But now that we're done with our recovery, let's talk about how we're going to take these hoses off. On this side, it's no big deal. We just simply close these valves off and that's done. And then we can also close our individual valves here, 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 and now we've isolated everything on our equipment. Now this is gonna be in a vacuum, so there's no refrigerant loss on this side. However, there is gonna be refrigerant loss on this side, the high pressure side. Now, when I used this large thick hose, I also wanted to add this manual low loss valve to it. So now what I can do is close this valve completely off, and I'm also gonna close the valve on my recovery machine. What this allows me to do is take the connection, take the hose loose from my recovery machine and leave it attached to my tank. Now with this manual valve right here, we've trapped the liquid refrigerant in this hose, but it's a large hose, so it's gonna be a little bit more liquid refrigerant. But here's what's cool about this. Once we take this hose and we turn the tank right side up again, and let's look at this one so we can imagine what's happening. Now our hose right here is connected to the vapor side. So now our hose is again at the top of the tank. So if I take this hose and put it somewhere high and leave this valve open, the liquid refrigerant will start dripping out of this hose and it will start dripping down inside this tank. In other words, it's hooked up to this side right here and that liquid refrigerant will start dripping down. Now again, it will not run down, it will drip down. So it takes a little bit of time, but eventually all the liquid refrigerant in this hose will drain back into the tank. Now, if we used it on the liquid side, we wouldn't be able to do that because of the straw, it wouldn't be able to drain. The liquid, the weight of the refrigerant in the hose would not be enough to be able to push down through that tube and lift all the other liquid up. But because we use the vapor side, which 
was faster without the restriction of the straw, it also had this really cool advantage when we turn the tank right side up and it allows it to drip. So we're just gonna set this over out of the way. And now we can let that refrigerant drip back into the tank. We can take our hoses loose and do whatever other repair or service we need. And we've recovered all that refrigerant. Now if you see that was much, much faster, but there's still more that we can do.